This side, Rahul Magan here is a Group Chief Executive Officer, Treasury Consulting and also a Venture Capitalist. Today, starting on 11 June 2019, we are shooting another beautiful video which is about the LIBOR transitioning the world of swaps. But before I start this video, I would like to tell you something. So, a lot of people are asking a question from me and that question is that why you do not respect the institutions, comma, MBA schools, comma, the regulators. Every day somebody or uh, WhatsApp, Twitter, LinkedIn, maybe a phone call, YouTube comment, people are writing that on YouTube and a lot of places. The question is, sorry, the answer is name one institute, oblique MBA college, oblique regulator, oblique law and keep doing oblique oblique. Who is teaching this? And then I will start respecting the institutions. If you are not teaching this, do not expect respect of institutions. Okay, here we start. Today the world is facing a very difficult problem and that problem is the regulation. You would be surprised to know that I am saying that the world is facing a very difficult problem and that is the problem of regulation. Absolutely correct. Regulation is good. There is no doubt about regulation. But the bad part of regulation is that if regulation is not uh, appropriately devised, and once the regulations are not appropriately devised, it ends up having a meaningless result. And this is what it is happening. This is what it is happening. I don't want you to name several regulations, but we are having various regulations like MIFID II. When MIFID II draft came in the public domain, I criticized MIFID II and said that this is not a workable solution. And result? It's been more than two years, two years, MIFID II is in place, but what's the result? It's almost a failure. The only difference is that, the only difference is that the regulator is not accepting from his mouth that it is a failure. Rather, he want media to let him know that it is a failure. The another failure which is going to get happen after one, one and a half year is the LIBOR transitioning. There are efforts which are in place and I thank you Chicago Mercantile Exchange for bringing an effort to bring SOFR in the public domain and at the same time linking SOFR with various derivative instruments and I again thank you Chicago Mercantile Exchange for registering a stupendous growth as far as the SOFR derivatives are concerned. However, having said that, there is an effort which is again required to make sure that LIBOR transitioning can done be smoothly. As you very well understand that majority of the finance brains of the globe think that the spot market is $5 trillion, precisely $5.04 trillion and after that it's a no man's land. No. The largest market of the globe is the intrastate market. And according to an estimate by Bank of International Settlement and their trial survey as per the public domain will come somewhere in September 19 when we get the latest figure but whatever figures we have now the interstate derivative market is approximately 100 trillion dollar market 100 trillion dollar and today the most unfortunate fact which we have is that most of the banks cannot have a one consensus on a one single report that what is the total amount of derivative instruments which are lying on LIBOR. Nobody know. Doshe have their own, Goldman have their own figure, Chase having their own figure, Standard Chartered having own figure, Society General having their own figure, ANZ, Westpac, everybody having their own figure and I do not know why the top banks of the globe are not been able to make a consensus as far as the total amount of derivative instruments lying on the LIBOR. The biggest thing which the regulators have to assess before drafting the LIBOR transitioning plan and that is what I am telling you two years before. 
so that after two years, one year after two years, so basically one year after the implementation, when the LIBOR would be a failure. So according to the reports, August 2021 would be the last month of LIBOR. And then it would be phased from Reuters, Bloomberg and all financial terminals. I am giving you right away that August 22, which is approximately three years from now, the LIBOR transitioning would end up a mess for the globe. Anyways, people are not listening, they are sleeping, they are living in a rosy world, let it be. When it comes to LIBOR transitioning, we need to understand one thing that regulators have to invite the front office people on the board. And they should not invite the people, those who are Oxford graduate, Harvard graduate, Stanford graduate, they know nothing. They do not have any exposure of Reuters. They do not have any exposure of Bloomberg. They don't know how the swaps is being tapped, how the swaps is being done. I hereby open challenge. I hereby open challenge the swap world, which I'm going to let you know after five minutes. From Harvard till Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. Or from I'm Ahmedabad till a third tier B school of Russia. You let me know one management institution which is dealing this swap world in a that exotic way. I start respecting the institution. When we talk about LIBOR transitioning, we need to understand that front office people would be in a deeper mess if the LIBOR transitioning would be planned in an, appro in, in an unappropriate way. And unfortunately, this is what it is happening. Now here we go. When we talk about SWAP, this line, the top line, we're going to cover later. So you need to wait for 10-15 minutes for that. When we talk about the SWAP, SWAP are predominantly divided into two parts, which is the deliverable SWAP, which is right here, I'll show you, which is the deliverable SWAP, and another is the non-deliverable SWAP. So deliverable SWAP is a SWAP whereby both the legs to be settled by both the parties, and of course it is on the net, it is on the gross basis, while the non-deliverable is always on the net basis. Unfortunately, the mindset of most of the people and 80% of these most of the people come from India who believe that non-deliverable forward is the only thing which we have the non-deliverable that is definitely wrong. So I have divided into two parts. One is the deliverable part of it and one is the non-deliverable part of it. Deliverable part is divided into three parts. One is known as the dollarization swap one is known as the reverse dollarization swap and one is known as the benchmark swap. Similarly, non-deliverable will again divide into three parts. One is known as the non-deliverable dollarization swap. One is known as non-deliverable reverse dollarization swap. And one is known as non-deliverable benchmark swaps. Now, the dollarization swap means when you convert the the functional currency asset and liabilities into the dollar assets and liabilities. There are many people, those who tend to believe that swaps are major, majorly, majorly used to convert the liabilities. They are absolutely incorrect. Swaps are majorly used to convert asset as well. If you look at Reuters in Bloomberg, you would get to know that even today, standing which is 11th June 2019, there would be some pricing which is happening whereby somebody would have converted the US dollar asset into some another liability or into some another asset could be GBP could be Euro or somebody would have converted the GBP liability into the dollar liability which is known as the cross currency. Now I repeat swaps are divided into two parts deliverable swaps and the non-deliverable swap. Deliverable and non-deliverable divided into three parts which is dollarization swap reverse dollarization swap and the benchmark swap. In our parlance, benchmark swap is known as BMK swap, BMK. There are many people, those who call this as a TR, TRSY, treasury swaps as well, they are also not incorrect, they are perfect. I agree with them. Dollarization swap means when you convert the functional currency assets and liabilities into dollar assets and liabilities. While the reverse dollarization swap means when you convert non-functional, when you convert the dollar asset and liability into functional asset and liability. So let me give you a simple example. We are an American company, ExxonMobil. Okay, don't take ExxonMobil, take India as an example because we are talking about the dollar terms. 
we are uh, i will give you both example we are reliance industries limited who have the inr liability in the books and why we took this inr liability it is for our petrochemical business we are not here discussing what trade they have taken what is libor and so on so forth it is for the petrochemical business assuming the liability is 14000 crores and for a minute assume that indian rupee is trading at 70 which is currently trading 69.51 but on a flat note take it as 70 if reliance industries limited would convert this dollar liability into INR, uh, sorry, uh, convert INR liability which is 14,000 crores to dollar liability which is 2 billion dollar because 14,000 crore is 2 billion dollar. This is known as dollarization swap. Reverse, reverse, Reliance Industries Limited is having 14,000 crores of assets and what is that asset? They also have some domestic business in India on which they are generating the Indian rupee invoicing and they wanted to convert this 14,000 crores of asset into dollar asset. Now this is what? This is again dollarization swap. But like earlier, this is asset. Previously was liability. Alternatively, Reliance Industries Limited is having Geo as a business and they what they are doing, they are taking 2 billion ECB, 2 billion external commercial borrowing in India. And they wanted to convert this 2 billion ECB into INR. Because their functional currency is INR, the capex would happen in INR because the work is happening in India. This is reverse dollarization swap. Conversion of uh, USD dollar, USD asset and liability into the functional assets and liability. Similarly, deliverable and non-deliverable will depend upon dollarization and reverse dollarization and benchmark. While the non-deliverable also, non-deliverable dollarization, non-deliverable reverse and non-deliverable benchmark. If you talk about dollarization, it is further divided into two parts. One is fixed swaps and float swap. Fixed means it is at the fixed rate. Float means it is at the floating rate. Fixed and float will further divide into two parts. Fixed means when we change. When we change one fixed index to another fixed index. When we change one fixed index to a floating index. The so-called business schools worldwide and the so-called books always giving a wrong example that swap means one party paying fix while another party paying floating. This is a shit example and this example tells that what is the knowledge level of that author and unfortunately worldwide millions and millions of people are being taught the same example and end result out of this so many millions, hardly 0.0001% like me will get a chance because of the blessings of Lord to work in a treasury domain. And rest people will continue to believe that, that the swap is one party paying fix, another party paying floating. And 0.001% people, those who get a chance in treasury, they never make YouTube channel and they never let people know that, that the reality is far different from what we have in the books. So I repeat. So I have into two parts, deliverable, non-deliverable, both are divided into three parts, dollarization, reverse dollarization and benchmark. Dollarization divided into two parts, fixed swap and float swap. Fix will divide into two parts, fix to fix, fix to float. Similarly, float will divide into two parts, float to float, float to fix. When we talk about float to float, here, and when we talk about the same situation in the reverse dollarization, float to float, this is known as basis swaps, B-A-S-I-S. -S. Basis swap is one of the most interesting swaps which we have. Of course, the swaps are of multiple types. You have amortization swap, you have accreting swap, you have basis swap, you have contour swap, you have waterfall swap. I don't know how many people know about it or not, but we have bank in a world. I don't want it to, I do not want to quote the name. You might, you might guess it out. My favorite bank. They have created another derivative instrument, waterfall swap. And if you know it about water swap, waterfall swap, you will get to know that the way they create it, it is a better version of amortizing swap. And wonderful. And today both Reuters and Bloomberg do not have a simplistic example of a waterfall swap. You can even check the Google that no one talks about waterfall swap. Hopefully we will talk soon if we get done. 
So reverse dollarization and dollarization divided into four two parts each. Fix and float, fix and float. These two divided into four parts each, which is fix to fix, fix to float, float to float, float to fix. This is known as float to float component is known as the basis swap components. While this entire architecture, benchmark swap we talk later, this entire architecture here, I will make a tick. And this entire architecture here, non-deliverable architecture, which is fix and float and reverse dollarization, this will further divide into two parts. Do we have embedded option? Swaps do have embedded option. Who said swaps do not have embedded option? And they are known as callable swaps and puttable swap. The mess will come after this. They are divided into three parts. Callable swaps, puttable swaps. While both callable swap and puttable swap are further divided into three parts, which is American way of settlement, European way of settlement, and Bermudian way of settlement. American way of settlement, Bermudian, sorry, European way of settlement, and Bermudian way of settlement. How simple is the world of swap, right? Which is taught in the business school. Those who do not have a valid option, please welcome swaption. What is swaption? Swap and option. Swaption is of two types. Pair swaption, receiver swaption. What is pair swaption? Pay fix, receive floating. I repeat. What is pair swaption? Pay fix, receive floating. What is receiver swaption? Receive fix, pay floating. But life do not end here. Life start from here. Pair swaption will divide further into two parts. Which is long pair and short pair. So what is pair swaption? Pay fix, receive floating. What is long pair swaption? Same. What is short pair swaption? Reverse. Uh, receive fix, pay floating. What is receiver swaption? Same thing. Receiver swaption and the pair swaptions are little, uh, little confusing concepts and very difficult to understand. But at the same point of time, if we talk about the interbank market, if we talk about the covering of the liability, like few days ago, I got a message from one kid who works, who was studying in sub B school, don't want it to quote. He said, you said that bank, uh, he gave me a case that if somebody landed 14,000 crore to Reliance, then how is hedging that in the interbank market? I said, sir, the only way to hedge in the interbank market is the swaption. But is the swaption, but can the swaption, but, the, but do swaption require the interbank limit? Can any bank take the swaption? Do you need an excellent, excellent functional skill to have swaption? How many people know swaption? Those who are watching this video. This entire architecture will copy here. I repeat, non-deliverable dollarization, non-deliverable reverse dollarization, which is fixed to float, float to fix divided into four parts each. Then we have embedded option, embedded option again, callable, putable, and which is further divided into three parts, American, European, and Bermudian. And then we have pair option and receiver option. Life do not ends here, rather it starts here. What would, if I do not have foreign currency in place. I wanted to deal with the local currency. You are most welcome. Who said no to you? Please welcome benchmark swaps. Benchmark swaps are of following kind. Treasury swaps, BMK swaps, CMS constant maturity swaps, constant maturity treasury swap, OIS overnight index swap. If you look at here, it is the same thing, non-deliverable benchmark, treasury swap, benchmark swap, CMS swap, CMD swap, OIS swap, but, but a black sheep, FRA, forward rate agreement. I will tell you a story. When I was uh, in the treasury department, uh, I went to a conference, I don't want to name a bank. In this conference, we were discussing, I raised a question about FRA, Forward Rate Agreement. And you don't trust, I don't want to name the bank, one of the panelists from that bank is said, don't worry, RBI is doing FRA on a daily basis. 
and I felt that I am luckiest man that I am being taught up by the very good bank in FX. Because Indian Rupee Forward Rate Agreement is the most unliquid instrument which we have worldwide. The way and there are many intelligent people, those who believe that forward contract and forward rate agreement are the same thing. It is just like Singapore and Kuala Lumpur are the same thing. No. Singapore is an independent country, Kuala Lumpur is an independent country. Forward rate agreement and the forward contracts all are different thing. But the game will start absolutely here. This entire, which is on my left hand side, is settled on fixing. Fixing, reference rate, fixing, reference rate. While the, this part, which is on my right hand side, is settled on cuts. And what are cuts? Tokyo cut, Sydney cut, uh, New York cut and Luxembourg and Frankfurt cut. I repeat, on my left hand side, it is settled on fixing. I have mentioned everywhere, fixing, fixing, fixing and everywhere fixing. While my right hand side, which is this, it is on cuts. There are many intelligent people, those who still believe that cuts and fixing are the same thing. But they are not. And the problem is getting complicated once we have three more persons comes into picture and they are American, European and Bermudian. Now I would like to you to do just a small thing for me. And what is this small thing? Just calculate the total number of combinations which we have in this, in this chart. And the person who will calculate this right combination will get a price from treasury consulting side. I repeat, you need to calculate the total combinations and you will get a price from treasury consulting. However, do not forget to have American, European and Bermudian into the picture. Do not forget. Now the problem is getting more aggravated which is not being sensed by the media and unfortunately regulator is also extremely silent on that. Different countries of the globe have started testing their independent interest rate. And fortunately or unfortunately, Australia joined the league. We have LIBOR, which is phased out in two and a half years. We have SONIA, standing overnight index average, which is the leading contender. We already shooted a video that how the UK treasurer or the British treasurers are ignoring LIBOR over SONIA. We have Yonia, European overnight index average, Euribor, but the new contender is ONIA. American overnight index, oh sorry, Australian overnight index average, which is replacing AUD bill rate. Sorry, AUD overnight rate. I don't know how successful it would be. Only Reserve Bank of Australia would be in the right position to tell that. But the latest news suggests that Ionia is joining the link. Then we have SOFR, secured overnight financing rate. Chicago Mercantile Exchange is a very, is a step ahead in that direction. Then we have Rania. I will give this quiz to you. Check it about Rania if you have any information. Then we have Jaibor, Japanese Interbank Offer Rate, Cyber, Singapore Interbank Offer Rate, and the list is long. The world of swap is not about paying fix and receive floating or vice versa. This is the world of swap. I would like to wind my video with two questions. Number one. Do you still think that in the absence of right, regulate, right regularity, uh, right reg regulatory by regulators, the LIBOR transition would be an easy part? And my second question, name one business school from Harvard to IIM Ahmedabad, from IIM Ahmedabad to Russia which taught this functionally and in and out. My last thing, Treasury Consulting is a competent authority and we know the valuation of all the swaps which are right here on the live Reuters and Bloomberg. You let us know and we would be able to price any of the swap live on Reuters and Bloomberg. And now another thing, as you know that we are heading as a bank 
and we are ready for banking license by 2024 and fixed income dot global third phase already started you can see the changes are happening more than 25 bespoke derivatives are coming in public domain you heard me right 25 bespoke derivatives are coming in public domain and with this we wanted to let the banks know those who are watching this video and those who are not watching this video that the game is on with this Pleasure Consulting would like to thank you very much you know my mobile number 919899242978 you know our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global have a good time and talk soon thank you